Hey, Gaijin Guinea Pig here. Today we're talking about The Last of Us. Sony just uploaded a Last of Us Part 1 Remake Rebuild Features and Gameplay trailer. Basically a trailer that says, hey, this is why our rebuild of The Last of Us is worth your $70. Like, it's a full price game, straight up. And, you know, I understand why they uploaded this, because I'm a huge fan of The Last of Us. I'm... I'm a bigger fan of The Last of Us Part Two. I think you would be hard pressed to find any games for the PlayStation, at least in the last decade, that gave you a gameplay experience, a narrative experience, just a general overall experience as good as The Last of Us and The Last of Us Part Two. I think they are console selling games. Like I would say, hey, you need a reason to buy a PlayStation? These games are it. Here's a bit of a hot take, but I actually think that Part 2 is a better game than Part 1. I know there are a lot of crybabies out there that think Part 2 ruined the story because, spoiler alert, you know, they killed Joel and he's the main guy from Part 1. But don't get it twisted, folks. Joel is not a great guy. He's a scumbag character, just like the rest of the people living in this screwed up world that are just clawing, fighting, doing anything they can to survive. The only reason you care about Joel is because the first game put you in his shoes, so you develop that bond with him. But he's not a good guy. The whole reason part two exists is to show you that there are two sides to every story and that there is a villain in everyone's storyline. So, two, it was fantastic. It's one of the best games I've played in years, quite frankly. Anyway, that's a side tangent. I have the PS4 Last of Us Remaster box set, and no question, I'm probably gonna get the remake slash rebuild like day one, but I was chatting with my brother about this the other day, and the one big thing that we did discuss was how are they justifying the full price tag right because yes it's a rebuild it's not just like one of those old ps4 games that gets a ps5 spit shine and it's usually like a free upgrade this is like built from the ground up which is cool and all but i'm still not feeling 70 dollars vibes just hearing that so let's take a look at this features and gameplay trailer and let's see why we're shelling out that cold hard cash for a game that came out in 2013 that we've all played, that we that we all love, and that we all know like the back of our hand. Violence, blood, gore, sex, give it to me all. I'm already Frame rates. More than two years ago, when we were finishing Last of Us Part Two, and we were working on those flashbacks within that scene for the first game, we got excited with the idea of like, oh man, what if we made The Last of Us Part One to look as good, if not better, than what we have done with Last of Us Part Two, which we really pushed the boundaries of like what we could do from gameplay and a graphical standpoint, and felt like if we do that, we could actually come even closer to our original vision of what the first game would have been had we not been constrained by technology. Obviously, vision is very important for artistic people, creative types. The original creative vision of The Last of Us, I think in a lot of ways, was larger than what the PlayStation 3 was capable of. The tech of the PS5, it's like an open box of, of tools and goodies that we can play from and draw from. The 4K, HDR, improved haptics, 60 frames, help us to reimagine The Last of Us. Mm. When they do they that, you really see it. To rebuild our characters at the highest fidelity. Mm. Not only are the characters more detailed, I mean down to the, the irises and the pupil depth. You know, you fall into the eyes of the characters. I want to see the hair stand Aside up on that, the back of a neck. Facial animation is just way more believable. Like all the nuances, mm. all the little subtle reactions, glances, glares, right? Like you get all of it almost closer to sort of the original performances. Super so no important. You stick to me like glue. Like glue. Like glue. Got it. Good. Good. We
side note. Yeah, it's really important to to improve the facial animations in a game like that where cinematic storylines are such an integral part of the narrative. Like it's 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 interesting that they brought up Henry and Sam there just now because I always felt like looking back at some of the old PS4 footage Henry always his face just seems so stiff to me. Like I'm really glad that they're retouching up on those things. Like it's still a great looking game, the PS4 original, but it needed it needed some spit shine. Let's be honest. You're able now to not only just have the highest fidelity characters in the cutscene, but also in gameplay. It's the same character, so now we can do these seamless transitions in and out. Every part of the game has benefited from seamless transitions and emotional scripting. I only played the Left Behind segment once. Our stories happen in gameplay, on a stick. She knew my mom. Mm. All this stuff is designed to keep you constantly that in looks this really world. looks really good. Riley, come here. <laughs> now you got this, go. All right, we know it's gonna look good. What else? One of the things that the PlayStation 5 is really enabling is that we're able to have a density of physics objects in a scene that we just we could never do before. Like this has always been <laughs> the dream is to have this number of bumpables, chippables, breakables, destructible objects in a scene. Mm. I love that kind of stuff actually. Makes it feel rich, makes it feel lived in. Materials yeah. don't have the properties that you'd expect. The turret truck in, in Pittsburgh, when it's firing at you and it's just ripping apart the concrete and sending objects flying left and right. Seeing things break, yeah. like there's fear. There's a real fear that it, it cranks evokes. up the tension. And it's giving us a much more dynamic range of gameplay to play with. Surround him. Our AI tech has just increased incredibly. What we were building the basis of the, the final last build. of part two's AI. And it has sophisticated systems for things like the fundamental knowledge model of how these NPCs perceive wow. and understand what the player is, is much more sophisticated. Now how the enemies are communicating with each other, how they're chasing you, how they're flanking you, how intense that fight feels, it's so much more rewarding coming out of it from good, the other side. Because I thought the AI was pretty good to start with. I mean, not great. AI is one of those things that most video games struggle with. There's always that one bad guy that you look at and you're like, uh, what is he doing? So I'm all for that, making the enemies communicate in a more realistic way. Get out! One of the other big AI improvements is the buddies. The oh, buddies, thank goodness. The technology that we developed for The Last of Us Part Two has this very sophisticated understanding of like, okay, thank this is where goodness. the enemies can see their exposure. We not only have exposure, mm. we have future exposure. So buddies can know, okay, that enemy is walking forward and they're about to round this corner. So in three seconds, that corner is going to be exposed. So I'd better move now to avoid this enemy seeing me. This yeah, because while enemy AI can be pretty dopey, oftentimes, you know, NPCs that are on your team, usually their their AI is like, yay, yay. feel like a babysitter because you're like, why are you standing there? Move. This really lets the buddies make very complex uh, decisions and maintain that that feeling of stealth much more believably. I like what he's saying. Another big enhancement to the gameplay is that we have this technology called motion matching. Motion matching is this mm. technology that's basically using logic that tries to match the desired movement to a bucket of hundreds of animations. Mm. A mo-capped actor has gone in and run this whole gauntlet of movements to get a really wow. full set of all the different ways a person can move. And then it's basically every frame trying to find That's the wild. best matching animation that fits the path of where the character is going to go. And this motion model just gives this really seamless sense of transition. The player's movement is just a lot cleaner. It's this really smooth organic movement through the space. Other First, developers to take build note. That core experience. And then beyond that, we wanted to add uh, several features that fans have been asking for. Oh, yeah. For example, we now have a permadeath mode. I long doubt we've added a brand that I'll play speed that. run mode so players can time Whoa. themselves. There's a whole community of gamers. That, that scene looks amazing. How fast they can play through this game. 
Beyond that, we added a bunch more of unlockables. So there's all these different outfits for Ellie and Joel. That Nerd stuff. Unlock. A model viewer mode, so people can really appreciate the details. We added award-winning accessibility features. Every single accessibility option that we offer, that's a barrier removed for someone. You know, just speaking on those models real quick, I love the models actually, um, but as they are now, they take forever to load. Like you click on one and you're like, uh, so hopefully they fix that. As she surveys the apartment, her eyes wander to Joel. She steps past wow. the couch. He wears the wristwatch Sarah gifted him, which now has this a cracked face. To my wonderful. knowledge, this is the first PlayStation game that has audio description built into the game, built into the cinematics. Now it's nighttime. Joel stirs in his sleep. And that's really the way we've tried to push the frontier of accessibility on this game. Take note, other developers. So much of the identity of The Last of Us is the world. Oh, we revamped completely great. the art direction. You know, everything from these expansive vistas that not only are they beautiful, but you feel the environments. You feel the environments in a much more visceral way. The rooftops overlooking the Capitol building, for example, like just the, the breath of fresh air when you go up there and you just like, you feel that sort of release in, in tension. And then, mm. you know, to juxtapose that, down in the, the tunnels in wilds, and you get that dank, flooded tunnel feel, that humidity, you can actually feel it. All these environments are just completely reimagined. Mm -hmm. Now we got our engine on the PS5, those haptics, the 3D audio, they're fast loading. It really creates a much more immersive, and because of that, much more emotional experience. One of the things I absolutely love with the 3D audio in The Last of Us Part One is being able to hear an enemy before they sneak up on you. And trying to do a, a stalker fight with the 3D audio is just so much fun. You're hearing the them skitter around PS5 in a different room, and you're hearing them trying to get a pulse 3D you. headset. So we'll see. Having that two-part reaction of like hearing, turning, seeing, reacting, it, it just really heightens that sense of just being grounded. You are in this character, you are in this world. All right, I'm sold. Now, with the PlayStation 5, the amount of control oh, that, looks that developers beautiful. have over the dual sense it's really, really cool. All the guns in the game have a variable amount of resistance on the triggers when you aim them. The way it works with the bow is that at the very beginning, when they're starting mm. to draw the bow, there's a little bit of resistance. And then as the bow gets tauter and tauter, the amount of resistance mm. is increasing. And then. I just want to say about adaptive triggers and the haptic feedback with them on the PS5. Not every game utilizes those in with the same level of quality, but I have faith in Naughty Dog that they're going to be more immersive and less frickin' annoying. When you release the bow, you're also getting that resistance going out of the trigger. When you are aiming and firing the shotgun, you're going to get a haptic vibration on the shot. And then mm -hmm. what I think is one of the ways that the DualSense really advances things is you're going to get a haptic vibration on the pump of the shotgun. And what's much more sophisticated about that on the DualSense is that in effect has a little like speaker in it. <laughs> and it's playing an Wait, audio file that comes through in the vibrations. And those two beats is what you're going to feel on the controller. The little controller speaker is very gimmicky. This also ties in to the new workbench animations. So but I'm you've open seen to Joel it. taking apart a gun or screwing something in or putting a new stock on a gun, that moment where he's like jamming that on, you're going to get that haptic feedback on that. I want to feel like we I'm have, building you know, my own guns. All across the board, you know, for all the moments you kind of expect for clambering, jumping, landing, meleeing, getting meleeed, like all those kind of high intensity moments we have represented in the haptics. Up. What I personally absolutely adore is the way we can enhance the really like quiet, subtle moments of gameplay. So it's like when Joel goes in to pet the giraffe, getting that little light touch on the <laughs> haptics as he's petting the giraffe. To me, that's the it's essence fun. of The Last it's of cute. Us. It's the high tension moments, it's the low tension moments, it's all Gimmicky, of the feeling. But cute grounded it's your feeling immersed in this world it's all about bringing you along with that story in as many ways as we can and that's what the new technology on the playstation 5 is allowing 
I feel you, buddy. I'm not knocking it. So is that everything you hoped for? Jury still yeah. out. There's something I'm... special about that core experience of playing as Joel and Ellie on this journey. Then to take that experience and really honor it and keep the authenticity of it but elevate it in every way possible, whether it's pipeline, whether it's art direction, whether it's a technology, everything that allows us to make that experience better. Not different, extremely better. That's why, to me, this is the definitive way to play The Last of Us. Tell him, Neil. Tell him. Cowabunga, baby. September 2nd. Five days before my birthday. Happy birthday to me. Yeah, I mean, there was nothing in this trailer that made me go, you know, just like fall out, like super wowed, but I'm still getting it. Eh? I think, like I said, it's one of the best games ever made on the PlayStation. And I actually haven't played it in a super long time, probably since I beat it or beat the Left Behind DLC. And then it was just like in the past, moved on to part two. So... I think it's going to be really great to revisit this game after such a long period of time that it's almost going to have this really fresh newness to it. So that's what I'm looking forward to the most. And then I'll probably go right back into The Last of Us Part 2 right after I'm done playing this because it got a little bit of a PS5 glow up as well. I'm excited for this. I think it looks amazing. It. It's one of the best stories in video games, I think. It's just a fantastic game, and it sounds like it's going to be the best way to play it. And, you know, insert fry meme here, take my money. I'll be definitely buying this. What are you, what are you guys' thoughts on The Last of Us remake slash rebuild part one? Are you gonna be picking it up, or are you just like, eh, been there, done that? <laughs> I don't need it again. Let me know down in the comments below. Give this video a like, think about subscribing, check out some of my other videos while you're at it. Mm -hmm. But thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.